to call to order the regular scheduled meeting of McAllister City Council, Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. Uh, we also have an order, or we also have a quorum. Uh, Mr. Irvin, would you like to lead us in the invocation yes, of Pledge of Allegiance? Would you stand, please? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together this evening, and uh, we ask your blessing on this body as they deliberate for the city of McAllister and its residents. We ask that you guide them and protect them and uh, all the citizens of this town. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Pledge. I pledge amen. allegiance amen. to the flag amen. of the amen. United amen. States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God. God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Cora, would you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith? Here. Smith? Here. Brown? Here. Harrison? Here. Okay, now we're on to recognition and awards. This month, the employee of the month for August is Michelle Whiting, Human Resources for the City of McAllister. Michelle demonstrates a high commitment to the morale and recognition of employees, going above and beyond her standard job duties to ensure that departments and individuals are given personalized acknowledgement. She regularly reuses her own talent, time, and resources to complete projects and thinks outside the box to ensure efforts are not generic but carefully customized. This includes conception, planning, implement implementation of lunches, small gifts, photo opportunities, and incentives. Michelle is always helpful, serves on committees, and looks for opportunities. She brags about successes and is never negative about our struggles. Her employee-centered approach makes her welcoming as well as trustworthy. Her professionalism, helpfulness, and friendly demeanor make her a fantastic first impression for potential employees, no doubt bringing a higher standard to the expectations of our workforce. For these reasons, we concur that Michelle Whiting is deserving of this award. Okay, we're on to citizens' comments on non-agenda items. Residents may address council members regarding an item that is not listed on the agenda. Residents must provide their name and address. Council requests that comments be limited to five minutes. I see that we have three signed up tonight. If y'all like, would like to come to the podium, we'll go from there. Good evening. Um, my name is Danita Wiggins. I live at 804 Great Oaks Drive, McAllister. I'm going to read this. I'm going to write it out because I wanted to make sure I got what I needed to say out. So forgive me for reading. I come before you tonight with concerns about the upkeep and maintenance of the Northtown Cemetery. I recently returned to McAllister to live after absence of three years. My mother, Barbara Price, was a 24-year employee of the city of McAllister, the Housing Authority. She was buried at the east section of the Northtown Cemetery on August 19th, 2019. I also have a great grandmother, three great aunts, four uncles, and several cousins buried at the Northtown Cemetery. Many residents of McAllister do not know that the East area was delegated for African Americans during the segregation era. Upon several visits to the cemetery, I observed the difference in the maintenance between the East and the West sections. There is an obvious difference given in the care and attention given to the West End and not the same care and attention to the East End. My most recent visit was Friday, September 6th. I provided you pictures of what the cemetery looked like on Friday. Although the East End was mowed, weed eating was sporadic or completely ignored. As you enter the front gates driving toward the North Road, the West Ditches were mowed and neatly trimmed. The East Ditches were mowed, but no weed eating was done. The Ward 5 Councilwoman Maureen Harrison has been notified by multiple people, including the Elder Reunion alumni, myself on Memorial Day, 
and other concerned family members who have relatives buried in the cemetery about the disparity of the Northtown Cemetery. Councilwoman Harrison has brought the need for the cemetery's physical improvement to the council and others. She has obtained two concrete benches that will be installed by the city of McAllister to be placed on the east side once the overgrown areas and the proper care and attention is given to the east side of the cemetery. What can I, as a city taxpayer, property taxpayer, do to help and remedy this issue? What can the cemetery board do to assist in the disparity? And are they aware of the division of care? Also, I would like to know how does allocation for future cemetery funding occur? My belief in the way my community, my elders raised me is that all cemeteries are sacred grounds and should be treated as such. They should all receive the same care and attention regardless of the race of the individuals buried. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Would y'all like to go through the pictures? You can see <clears throat> number two, that's the west side after mowing. That's where we're going to call it, like they say, the Caucasian, the white side. The west side, number three picture is nicely trimmed. As we eat it around the graves. The west side trash can is empty. East side trash can has looked like that since Memorial Day. It is full. It is still full. The west side after mowing, again, the east side after mowing, there was no weed eating done at all. If you look at the east side after mowing, the lawnmower ran over a cross and flowers and left it as it was. He mowed over graves and he just took whatever was there. That is actual still sitting out there at the cemetery. He mowed down the cross, the flowers, everything. <laughs> there was no care when he went through that row. The unnecessary overgrowth as a child. That picture used to be a dirt pile. Now it has been taken over and it's just sitting there as an eyesore. For what reason? That could be cleared off. A pavilion could be put there, a gazebo, anything. <laughs> The next picture is the east side ditch. If you remember the picture before the west side, that was neatly trimmed around the, around the road. This is actual over, undergrowth. This is after he mowed on Friday. There was no weeding, no care whatsoever. The last picture is a street picture from the street. It shows you the east side nicely trimmed. It shows the west side nicely trimmed. The east side, there was nothing done. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, my name is Greg Rowland. Uh, my physical address is 238 West Peoria. Uh, I'm here uh, with my co-worker, Thanita Wiggins. Um, I don't have a vested interest in that Northtown Cemetery or any cemetery in town, honestly, for that matter. But what's projected in some of those pictures is wrong, like the cross, the flowers. Uh, you know, cities tend to discount those less fortunate or black and brown folks. I live at 238 West Peoria. I'm surrounded by Choctaw Nation homes, my ditch floods, my alley grows to about four feet. And I can't help but think if I live closer towards 17th or the country club, it would be better. And that's, that goes along a lot of things in this city, policing. And I had an incident happen to me a few years ago. My mom lives on Wade Watts, the street named after my grandpa. And the police force came, helmets, vests, the whole nine yards, looking for a white gentleman. And I can't help but think if my mom lived just a few more blocks south of Wade Watts, somebody would have ran a plate or somebody would have done some police work. But yet where we lived, they rolled up, guns drawn, stopped traffic, had friends calling me, what are you doing over there? So when you make decisions for this city, don't just make them for Kincaid Hills or 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th. Think about the west side. Now, they don't put as much money into 
your tax coffers or whatever, but just keep them in mind all the way down to the burial. I mean, that, that's sad in my opinion. And that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Gerald Wiggins, uh, my wife. Um, I'm representing the military side of the house. I walked out there, there are military graves over there. A uh, few of us here from, represent the American Legion, the VFW, and a couple of the Masonic Lodges. And in going, walking through there, in that same area that they're discussing, there are of all nature of folks there. And there's some history back there, and it's not being taken care of. And that in itself is a shame. Um, in saying that, some of the military graves that are out there, I guarantee you, if some of the military or some of the newspapers went out there and looked, they would probably bring that to your attention as well, because they're being mowed across, probably damaged, because they're flat stones. Now, we go out there every year, and we put flags on graves, and we clean up when we get a chance to as a military organization, but you're paying somebody to do this and it's not getting done. So my first question is, who's on the cemetery board? That's a question. I know you guys got one, so who are the members? During this time, we can listen. Mr. Wiggins, I'd be happy to talk to you afterwards. Okay. In all sincerity, and I mean that and, with respect to get you those answers. Well, the thing I'd like to know is who was on it and when did they meet? I'd like to know that. Because I guarantee we'll have a military representation at the next meeting. Is that, is that it, sir? That's it. Okay. Was there anyone else? Uh, my name is Cecil Lee. I'm one of the um, supporters of uh, my comrade, uh, Danita, and, and also those who have brought it to my attention. I am a, also a licensed funeral director who worked for Cheney Hawkins Funeral Home, have been working in uh, the funeral profession for many years here uh, in this community. <clears throat> there. Um, my understanding is, is that um, the caretakers of that particular Northtown Cemetery um, has been under the county. Now, I have also at one time was also a member of the uh, cemetery board. Uh, at this time, I'm not for sure whether there is a cemetery board. I have not heard of any meetings or anything. So, uh, but to uh, expound on some of the things that uh, Anita and others have uh, brought to my attention <laughs> is that uh, it is true that that cemetery is not being taken care of like it should be. Um, my understanding is, is that it's under the county, but then again, um, the county uh, has not did um, what I have seen. They have not uh, did what they need to be doing over there in that in that area. I don't know what the city can do or what the city has uh, authority over in that area, but I know that normally when we have a service over there, uh, the county digs the graves. Uh, the county uh, does pretty much everything over there. So um, my point being is, is that maybe you as the uh, city officials maybe can bring it to the county's attention uh, that there needs to be some care done. And I've seen, uh, I've seen the uh, city, uh, the Oak Hill uh, has been, uh, taken care of fairly well, and that they have help from some of the uh, prisoners uh, 
some of the prisoners from the county or whatever, and that that's who they have helping them. So I'm just giving you some, uh, trying to give you some uh, help on uh, getting some work done over there. It would be good to have uh, not only benches, but it would be good to have a pavilion in that uh, in that cemetery because uh, there are times when the, the weather is bad and when the services are being held, then there's no uh, there's no shelter over there for you know for the families or anyone. And uh, that would be some of my suggestion to for you all to possibly bring it to the uh, county's attention and and uh, maybe some things can get changed over there. But uh, uh, there is a difference in uh, the memory garden cemeteries. It's a perpetual care cemetery. It's taken care of. Uh, and if you have ever been to a national cemetery where uh, my comrades are buried, if you've ever been to a national cemetery, then you would know that they are taken care of very well, <clears throat> very well. And I think that there should be uh, the same thing should be done here uh, for my fallen veterans. And that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Is there anyone else? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, then that I will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Would anyone like anything pulled? Okay, I'll take a uh, motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Motion, Councilman Smith. Second, Councilman Brown. Corey, will you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Okay, on to public hearing. All persons interested in an ordinance listed under scheduled business shall have an opportunity to be heard in accordance with Article 2, Section 2.12B of the City Charter. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of McAllister, Oklahoma. Actually, do I need to take a motion to enter into public hearing? You do. Yes. Okay. Can I get a motion to go into public hearing? Motion, Councilman Harrison. Second, Councilman Smith. Corey, will you call the roll, please? Councilwoman Harrison? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. Brown? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Okay. Public hearing will be on an ordinance of the City of Council of the City of McAllister, Oklahoma, amending the Code of Ordinance, Chapter 62, Section 364. Designation of the floodplain administrator repealing all conflicting ordinances and declaring an emergency. The second ordinance is the ordinance amending the general zoning ordinance and accompanying map thereto known as general zoning ordinance number 1843 by changing the classification of the zoning district for the South Half, South Half of Lot 2, aka South Half, South Half, Southwest 4th, Northwest 4th, and Section 19, Township 5 North, Range 15 East of the Indian Base and Meridian. Pittsburgh County, State of Oklahoma, less than accept a tract of land from R1B single family residential district to R3 multiple family dwelling district. Is there anyone that would like to speak on either one of those ordinances? Seeing none, I would take a motion and a second to close public hearing. Motion, Councilman Brown. Second, Councilman Smith. Court, will you call the roll, please? Councilman Brown? Yes. Smith? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. yes. Okay, on to scheduled business. Item number one, consider an act upon an ordinance amendment of the city of McAllister designating the environmental projects coordinator as a floodplain administrator and declaring an emergency. Mr. Hornick. Good evening, May, uh, Vice Mayor, <laughs> Council. I'm here, here asking you to consider an act upon amending the land development code, specifically section 62-364, designation of the floodplain administrator. This change will designate the environmental projects coordinator to act as the McAllister floodplain administrator. Uh, this is from, I believe, about a month ago. Do we have any questions? Oh, okay. Councilman Harris. All right. Um, so everything has been taken care of, his qualifications, everything that, that he needs is all, everything is T's crossed, I's dotted. The, uh, there's still a T or two to cross. He's in some classes now, working on getting 
uh, certifications through DEQ and the state. So everything's progressing as it should be. We haven't been standing still. All right, all right, thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Hornick, how long do you expect it'll take him to get those taken care of, those last qualifications? Uh, caught me kind of off guard on that one. I'm gonna say probably, depending on when the classes fall, somewhere between six to nine months. Okay, and these are things he can take care of while doing the job and everything doesn't need to have done beforehand? Uh, there'll be some classes in Oklahoma City or okay. Tulsa that, you know, as part of his training, we will cover that and send him to get those certifications. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Take a motion for approval. Motion Councilman Smith. Second, Councilwoman Harrison. Court, will you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith? Yes. Councilwoman Harrison? Yes. Brown? Yes. 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 And there's also an emergency. So can I get a motion for an emergency? Make it there. Uh, Councilman Brown. Second, Councilman Smith. Or will you call the roll, please? Councilman Brown? Yes. Smith? Yes. yes. Harrison? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank, uh, you. thank you. At this time, could I take a moment and introduce Oliver? I have him Absolutely. here in the. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, at this time, I'd like to introduce Oliver Skimbo. He's our uh, environmental projects coordinator. He's replacing Cliff Pittner, who has returned to retirement. Cliff came back to help the city out in a rough patch, stayed a few years, and once we got Oliver on board, Cliff said he was going to go back to his wood carving. Uh, Oliver joined the city this past June, and he's attending the flood plan management courses and working toward his accreditation. Thank you for having me. Glad you're on board. We're glad Thank to you. have him. Yes. He's doing a great job. Good. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to agenda item number two. Consider an act upon an ordinance amending the general zoning ordinance and accompanying map thereto known as general zoning ordinance number 1843 by changing the classification of the zoning districts for the south half, south half of lot two, aka south half, south half, southwest fourth, northwest fourth, and section 19, township five north, range 15 east of the Indian Basin Meridian, Pittsburgh County, state of Oklahoma, less than accept attractive land from R1B single family residential district to R3 multiple family district or multiple family dwelling district. Jamie. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Um, I come to you with this request um, from the applicant Elk Incorporated, uh, represented by Mike Kirk, as requesting to rezone that property to multifamily. Um, the Planning Commission did review this on August 20th at their regular council meeting, and they voted uh, seven yes and one no to recommend uh, the applicant's request be approved. Um, I can tell you that um, it's my understanding from the applicant that they wish to include 24 market rate three bedroom apartments there up to 48 um, and after going through our comprehensive plan process we you know have a lot of information there that this type of housing is very much um, favored and or wanted in uh, the city of McAllister and so uh, staff does ask that you do approve this request as well. Is there any questions? I've got one. Councilman Harrison. All right. On uh, page, do you have the paperwork? On page three of three, uh, apparently, let's see, it has on the, the Planning Commission and City Council approved zoning to the South June uh, 2018 for planned housing development. That would include 62 units of affordable rental independent elder care and then it goes on so what what was the situation there it says on here the next paragraph uh, staff has not received written responses from surrounding property owners that are in favor or opposition to the application so what is the status on that uh, okay um, the first part of your question that yes. was an application by Choctaw Nation um, okay. Housing Authority uh, that was approved by the Planning Commission and the City Council. Okay. Um, they were required to subdivide that property mm -hmm. and we got to the preliminary um, portion of that and um, the project was just kind of stopped by Choctaw Nation. Oh, okay. And so we are just waiting further information for them to continue with that uh, subdivision. Um, the second part of your question, mm -hmm. um, we did receive, we found during the Planning Commission meeting that there was one uh, response that was faxed to us um, by Mr. Fouracre. Um, he was in attendance at the meeting. Um, and 
during the meeting, he had found um, his concerns was the screening that he wanted between his property and the applicant property. However, he um, owns some property north of Elk Drive. Mm -hmm. And so as long as he, he determined, or we all determined, that as long as he didn't cut down the trees on his own property, that the screening would continue to be there. Okay. I did follow up with him um, the day after, and we did find the letter. It just did not get to our office. Okay. I asked him if he wanted to include it in this packet, and he said that he was fine with it, that he did not, um, he didn't necessarily see a reason for me to include it in here at that point. Okay. So um, he seemed to be happy with the development. Um, I, I had, it, the property, it's like a hundred and, um, could tell you there's it's like 50 feet um, in the narrowest part of it I had provided a map to y'all of the property and you can see in that map um, and then the the deepest part of his property that's on the north side of Elk Drive is actually a hundred feet so he has considerable amount of property between him and the applicant property to provide that screen okay. In oh, yes. Please. And on um, page three of three, where it says appeal language if rezoning request not approved by planning commission, but everything it has been approved and it's all set to go. Is this correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I'll take a motion for approval. I'll make it there. <clears throat> uh, Councilman Smith. Second, Councilman Brown. Yes, sir. Core, will you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith. Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Twice Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to agenda item number three. Consider an act upon authorizing and approving a work order for professional services to infrastructure solutions for the roundabout to Fifth and Washington. Mr. Burke. Good evening, Council. Uh, this this work order is an amendment to a original work order that that designed the intersection at fifth and washington and from fifth street to sixth street uh, this this work order is for the construction management which would include bidding and overseeing the construction from the contractor and provide on-site inspection okay any questions? Yes, exactly. Uh, could you tell the viewing audience and myself exactly why is there a need for a roundabout there? Go ahead. Uh, roundabouts. The the reason roundabouts are are becoming more pre pre prevalent in yes. in the United States mm -hmm. is because they are safer. Okay. If if you take a, an intersection there, it's thing we, we we call interference points, intersecting points, places that you can have cars crash into cars and mm -hmm. the pedestrians itself. Okay? okay. A safer way to make an intersection is with a, a, a roundabout. Okay. It's actually a lot safer than a regular intersection is. That's the purpose of a roundabout. Is it okay to ask? Yes, please. Is, is this the area near the post office? This is. Okay. I, I, I have some uh, e exhibits if you'd like to see it. I would like to as well, please. Oh, let's, we can start over there with them. Oh, thank you. So exactly, is it okay to ask them this? Yes, uh, exactly where is this going to be positioned? Thank you, sir. All right, you said it's near the post office. Exactly, where is it? The intersection is near the post office. Oh, in that, that area. Okay. <coughs> Up on the map is north. Okay. This is the post office. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. To answer your question, I know that's a lot of technical stuff. Oh, well, you could just make it plain. <laughs> <laughs> Everyday language. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a question more for Mr. Stasiak, and we've oh. chatted about this briefly a while back. Oh, yeah. um, how, how much of a difference in cost is this roundabout compared to an actual just intersection? 
that we have right now if we would not if we weren't doing this it, it is a little bit more expensive because there's a lot more curbing that, mm -hmm. that, that, that that's that's involved okay uh more cost i think i, I ran the numbers on this thing i think we determined Pete, if i remember right is right around 50 to sixty thousand dollars more is that correct. correct yes sir okay and that's that's the total project difference yes sir okay so that's even with this oversight agreement and everything else is that part of this or is this already in the whole project as a whole this for fifth in washington that's part of the project we're talking about you would have construction management you would have bidding yeah. you'd have all those things no matter what okay so, so i'm just i'm i guess what i'm trying to clarify is that this isn't costing us more for construction oversight for the roundabout compared to not oversight no, 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 well surprise. vice mayor and and let's just take it to the next step also because the additional sixty thousand dollar cost mm -hmm. uh, to place this uh, roundabout here at this location has been uh, money donated by a private benefactor to the city and that sixty thousand dollars is already in the possession of the city so it's not costing the city any additional money whatsoever from rebuilding the intersection to putting a roundabout in it. Okay. Okay. Is there any other questions? Take a motion for approval. Motion Councilman Smith, second Councilman Brown. Corey, will you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. On to agenda item number four. Consider an act upon authorizing the mayor to sign change order number two from Built Right Construction LLC in a reduction amount of $19,068.40 for the downtown streetscape project. Mr. Ridenauer. Evening, Vice Mayor Council. Um, we are bringing forward to you uh, the second change order for the downtown streetscape. Um, unsurprisingly, when you start digging up 50 plus years of infrastructure. There's a lot of things that are different than what you expected. And we have found a lot of uh, changes as they, uh, as Built Right has been building out this uh, project. Um, luckily, and this isn't always the case, uh, we're actually having a net deduction in the change orders for this particular, uh, this particular item. It turns out, you may recall when we or originally approved the streetscape that we anticipated a retaining wall would have to be constructed on Choctaw from, on the south side of Choctaw from Maine to first, uh, or at least a portion of that distance. It turns out once they actually got in there that there was a retaining wall and that wasn't necessary and that saved us about $74,000, almost $75,000. Um, with the additional change orders, Obviously, most of those were uh, against us, where it would bring that number down to about twenty nineteen thousand dollars is what we'll end up saving overall once we once you include all the other changes. Um, I'm not sure if your paper is actually large enough to see all of those. I do have a larger one here. If we want to pass that around, you can you can see what some of those changes what some of those changes were. But overall, good news. We ended up saving some over this next uh, over this next portion of the streetscape. Are there any questions? Okay, well, okay. Um, where will the uh, $19,000, what fund will that go into? Um, well, it, I guess I'm not sure which one we would be taking it, it out it's, of. It, it's a combination. We would we would use a percentage of what, what funds we use to fund it, which would be tourism, economic development, and also our general fund. So based on whatever that percentage was that we pulled the original dollars from, mm -hmm. it would go back to those funds. Okay. okay. So we just distribute it in different it ways. All right. and, and just looking at this, it looks like it's all pretty even, not evenly, but it's distributed between infrastructure and stormwater. I don't think any of it actually touched the tourism dollars. I don't think okay. we hit that yet. So, Could so, you repeat where is it going? Um, it oh, looks I'm like sorry. No, no, sorry. between infrastructure and stormwater would be the two funds that would be receiving this benefit. Oh. We haven't touched the tourism dollars yet. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Take a motion for approval. Oh, Councilwoman oh, Harrison, okay. second Councilman Brown. Corey, will you call the roll, please? Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Harrison? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Thank you. Number five, discussion of possible action on approval of certain costs related to the fire department. Chief Brewer. Vice Mayor, Council. Mm -hmm. they, uh, we're asking to purchase a 2020 cabin chassis to 
can be used to remount one of our ambulances. Uh, the unit we're going to replace is a 2012 cabin chassis. The 2020 state bid will not be out until late November, but we have a local vendor, Sam Walker Ford, that has agreed to match the 2019 state bid in the amount of $36,057. Is there any questions? Uh, okay. Councilman Harrison? Uh, where did you say this would be purchased from? Uh, what? Out of out of town? No, a local vendor. Oh, Sa okay. Sam Walker Ford, I'm sorry. Oh, all right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. I'll take a motion for approval. I'll make it, Mayor. Councilman Brown? Second by uh, Councilman Smith. Corey, will you call the roll, please? Councilman Brown? Yes. Smith? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thank you. On to number six. Consider an act upon to approve the mayor to sign an assignment of deposit account with the bank and A to secure a business loan to the Laveras Handcrafted Foods. Sherrod and I. Evening again, Vice Mayor Council. Uh, we've been working with Laveras for, uh, for several months now. They've been uh, wanting to undertake an expansion project to increase their production capabilities. Um, to do so would require a loan that they do not have uh, the capacity to uh, secure. Bank and A has requested that we actually secure that on their behalf, or at least a portion of that. Um, there are a, a variety of, of improvements being made for this expansion project. Uh, I do think that before we have any discussion on it, it's probably best if we take a look at their PowerPoint. They have a few kind of a, a, bro a brief overview of their of their company and what they're planning on doing. Um, and I have Laveras here with me, Sean Duffy specifically. I'll uh, let you introduce yourself and you can have a visit PowerPoint. Thank you, Kurt. I'm Sean Duffy with Laveras Cheese Company. Um, I've been there for 12 years and we'll just go ahead and get started. So, oh yeah, we're giving it a moment for the projector. Um, so just a brief introduction. I went to Haleyville High School, and I live in McAllister. We've got some great cheese, guys. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is us visiting one of our goat dairy partners. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, we got a great team. We've got a great product line, and we'll just get started. So uh, surely most of you guys have heard of Lovera's. It's a great little shop just over there in Krebs. Come check it out. Um, it's quite a legacy uh, with the foods that we have and the products that we produce there. Uh, just a little background info there, um, and we'll move right along. We've won quite a few awards with our cheese, so um, I'm sure hopefully everyone has had the kosh kebab cheese that we make there. Um, we kind of took that and ran with it, and so we've, we've, we've gotten uh, quite a few accolades for what we do, so that's a good thing, um, and those are noticed nationally and internationally even. Um, okay, so a little bit about our dairy partners. Uh, we buy about 80% of the production of Nelson's, Nelson Yoder's dairy, that's a cow uh, dairy there in Clarita. 100% um, of Cross Broom Farms, about 60% of New Image Dairy, those guys are down in Toka. And uh, there's a new farm starting in Tecumseh, and we're going to be their only, uh, their only customer at this point. So um, the impact of what we do here in the Krebs McAllister area has sort of a statewide impact as far as the agricultural and especially uh, part particular dairy uh, industry here. Um, this is a little bit more about some of that, just, you know, sort of the um, multiplier effect of what we do in, in the Oklahoma uh, economy. Uh, this is a little bit about the production of cheese and how much it's grown for us. Uh, I started back in 2008 and we made about 12,000 pounds of cheese. Uh, as you see, our goal this year is to make 90,000 pounds of cheese, and we're well on our way to that goal. As a matter of fact, that we're probably going to hit 100,000 pounds this year. So um, that's been through uh, diversifying our product line, increasing, of course, our market, and uh, just consistently making excellent cheese. Um, this is a little slide that illustrates the growth in sales that we've seen. Um, as you see, uh, we kind of had a spike there in 2015, 2016, and, and, and you know, that was when we started to gear our marketing efforts towards uh, the food service industry. So working directly with chefs um, at restaurants from Chicago all the way to Houston. And 
Um, that is an ever increasing trend and demand for our products is in the chef driven restaurant industry. Um, so that's where we've seen a lot of growth as well as retail, but primarily in the food service. Um, so this slide speaks to Benny Keith. Um, they're a food service distribution company and they're our primary uh, partner in this project. And I wanted to give you guys a look at this slide. It has to do with some of the slides coming up in that um, you see that we've doubled sales with these guys consistently from 2016, 2017, and so on and so forth. And we're gonna do the same thing this year. So that is a relatively unheard of sales growth with a food service company. We're getting a lot of positive feedback from our partners at Benny Keith. And a matter of fact, we've just been effect, uh, accepted into their Dallas Fort Worth warehouse um, just a few months ago and we will be sort of launching our line to that Metroplex on October 2nd at a sales, uh, at a food show where the restaurant owners and operators and chefs will be, as well as the company reps and myself and some of our other cheesemakers. Um, so it's a great opportunity for us. Um, so this is a little look at that conversation with, uh, you know, uh, in a very brief, uh, vague way, but right now we sell cheese, primarily food service to OKC, Tulsa, Wichita and Kansas city. Um, which if you combine all those metropolitan areas, it's about 6 million folks. Uh, of course, less than, well, about three hours down the road from us, we have another 6 million and we've just now begun to work in there. And I can tell you, I've been there about four times now with Benny Keith reps and we sell about seven out of the 10 accounts we walk into. And that's, so the need and the desire for our products is definitely there in that market. Um, so that's a great thing for us. And so these are some of the new products we're looking at getting into over the next few years as we continue to expand. Um, and this is a little bit, that was me back in 20, two, uh, 2008, just part time. We only made cheese once every two weeks or so. And I thought, gosh, this is pretty fun. It'd be neat if we could make a little business out of this deal. And uh, so we took it from there, um, did lots of things, of course, uh, to educate ourselves and improve our facility and uh, improve our line. and. Here's where we stand now in 2019 with 10 full-time employees and two part-time employees. Um, so this is some of, uh, these are some of the uh, upgrades and investments we've made over the last couple of years. Um, this isn't a total list, but just look at some of the investments we've, we've taken on ourselves and that we're, you know, in the middle of financing and, uh, and, and we have finance, I should say. Uh, but, you know, we've spent quite a bit of money to get where we're at. Um, and I guess this is what we're trying to do now uh, at this moment. Um, and it's really critical that we get this done now because uh, a lot of our cheeses are, you know, like fine wines and all these great, wonderful foods that takes time to age them to perfection. So uh, whilst our sales are down in the middle of summer, the need to improve our inventory, especially as we are about to go after this very large um, and uh, open market in the Dallas Fort Worth area. We need to uh, develop inventory so that we have sufficient product to uh, promote there. Um, we have a drying room upgrade that's linked directly to our increase in production that we're going to see. Uh, the need to up upgrade what we do there so we can handle that increased uh, production. Um, ventilation system, our uh, food safety um, inspector has. Uh, highly suggest that we get that done as we do this because we'll need more air exchange in our facility to handle uh, potential mold growth and other pathogenic growth. Um, a new haul tank, um, that's specific to the new goat dairy that we're going to be working with. We'll have to do the milk hauling with that goat dairy. Um, right now, just to speak to the goat cheese business, if you guys haven't tried our goat cheese, please come check it out. I'll give you a free sample. It's over at Lavera's. Uh, we uh, eight years ago, we processed about 150 gallons every six weeks or so. And right now, our demand is upwards of five or 600 gallons a week. And, and we have been shorting customers. So the need to grow uh, our, our goat cheese line is definitely there. Uh, and then I, I put in um, here a $1,000 marketing budget. That's specific to putting myself and one of my colleagues on the road to Dallas uh, about four times a month over the next six months or so to really launch our line and get in front of as many chefs as we can and get create a buzz. Uh, so this is what we're trying to do. Um, and that's pretty much it. I know that was a very brief overview of a whole lot of stuff, but uh, any questions or comments? Mayor, I do. Please. First of all, 
I mean, I don't know the process or procedure. The city's backing the loan. It's like co-signing it. Am I correct? Well, in, in, in essence, that's what's being asked here is that the bank A is interested in giving a or providing a $30,000 loan. They can't secure it. They're asking if the city of McAllister would put up 80%, a CD worth 80% of that loan amount to secure the debt. Is this something that we normally do? Um, we have done this once before with Krebs Brewing Company to help secure his equipment. Um, I do think that this is a good standard, at least this concept is a good standard that the city council should consider. Um, if we can help secure loans, it provides an easy way to help local businesses expand at a fairly nominal amount compared to what it might take to recruit an industry. So um, I'm kind of looking at two cities here. So this is, mm -hmm. we're kind of just, because I know we kind of do work back and forth with Krebs and, and Calistra. I'm just trying to get clarification that why, and I'm not against Sammy, you know, I've known Sammy a long time. We can help him anyway, but just trying to make sure that, do we have any procedures, standards, regulations, or is this just something we're, that we're, we're going to have to, and I saw kind of the, the standard note with the bank. So the bank will not finance this unless we guarantee it. As I've been as speaking with the bank, as I've been told, is the is the loan by itself is is unsecurable. The the piece the things that they you saw on the screen by themselves, the bank don't they don't feel like they can secure it based upon what's being bought. If it if they were building a building, they could. Um, I don't think that they can secure a drying rack or a, a ventilation system. At least that's what they say. What's the payments going to be on this note for five years? Do we have a that's do you all know off the top of your head? I think that might be in here. I'm just maybe it's in here. I might have overlooked it, but that would be the loan with the bank in there. It would yeah, be. yes. But he should have some kind of standard of interest rates or something. I'm not sure what their payment would be. Uh, we would collect interest uh, because we would be putting a CD into the bank. We would collect interest off of what we deposit. Uh, they did not tell me what the market rate is today, but it would be based on whatever the market rate for CDs are. So is this going to be a future thing where businesses are going to come to us and say, hey, you know, we want to establish this. we got so many employees and the city would have to well, and guarantee. I mean, I'm not knocking it. Sure. I'm just asking. Incentives certainly will be, and they can come in a variety of ways, whether that be a cash grant or a donation of land, um, a TIF district, some type of tax rebate. Uh, I do think that collateral support is one of those types of incentives that we should consider. Um, it is, when you look at dollar for dollar, what comes out of the city, I do think that you're getting better returns from collateral support. Uh, let's say that we wanted to, you know, it's hypothetically, this was something we wanted to do, but we wanted to give them a, a cash grant instead uh, of, of the same amount that $24,000 would leave and we would never get it back. If we do collateral support, we're essentially accomplishing the same goal with the, with the possibility of getting that money back at a future date. Did you guys ask the city of Krebs to help you out at all? They just came up. I mean, I, we did. Okay, um, what they said. The city of Krebs wasn't comfortable with the idea at the time. They liked, they, they generally approve of the project, but they weren't ready to, to tackle this specific thing. A couple more than I'll. There are other people wanting to talk. You guys, your store, you sold it, right? So we're talking about the building. The, the store itself was not sold. Krebs Corner was sold. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you sold it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was sold. Okay. But the, the grocery store is it, still there. Yeah. So you got to generate enough income to where you're going to be safe. I mean, it's not like we're talking about millions of dollars. We're talking right. about probably, you know, what is it, 30 grand? Yes, it really comes down to the, the, a lot of it comes down to that inventory piece. Um, you know, it, as uh, Kirk alluded to, it's kind of hard to get a loan on cheese. <laughs> uh, yeah. Unless you're in Italy, actually. Uh, come, to, come to speak of it, uh, the Parmesan Reggiano is like gold there. It's, it's traded in banks and whatnot, but that's not the case here. And uh, unless you're good at selling cheese, it'd be a horrible investment. For, but for us, we happen to be really good at selling cheese. And so, uh, you know, it's a pretty sound investment. Uh, the way I look at it, I've got three jobs. One, make the best cheese possible. We've got 17 national awards that say we're doing all right there. The next one is to support the Oklahoma dairy business. Uh, one, one of the communities we do business in, Clarita, they have five dairies there. Three are going out of business this month because 
as you guys might not have heard, heard, price of milk is dropping. Uh, so we keep those dairies in business. And third, I'm just a poor kid from Haleyville, and I've designed 10 jobs for people that are meaningful, and they like showing for work every day. I'd like to get that to 20 uh, pretty soon. So, you know, we're asking for a small amount of money to get from A to B with a new opportunity in Dallas Fort Worth. I think, you know, I don't have anything wrong with the project. I'm just wondering if somebody come from another town, let's Kyle will come up here and need something, then what? Well, each each project would have to be uh, <laughs> vetted on, on its own. And that's actually something that occurred today is the, the lead committee, our economic Develop, development committee met. Uh, and we, are, we brought forward to them a draft for a collateral support program where we could maybe come up with some guidelines, some goals, objectives of, of how of how a collateral support program would work. Um, working with Sean on this, we really didn't have, we kind of was flying by the seat of our pants. We really didn't have any policies or procedures in place um, to help it along. But if we had a program in place that the council approved, um, I do think future businesses would want to come forward to us and we would have to vet them on, yes, this, this makes sense for us. No, this does not. Um, as far as what types of businesses we're looking at, definitely production related industries, um, especially if they're exporting out of the community that's bringing wealth back to the, to the area. Um, you mentioned that this was in Krebs, that admittedly is so. But when you're creating jobs and creating wealth, that, that benefit of economic development doesn't stop at, at, at the city line. I mean, it, it spills over to affect other communities. These people will, people that he employs will be living in McAllister. They'll be shopping in McAllister. We'll see the benefit as well. Okay. I've got a question for two or three. <laughs> all right. Um, first of all, I enjoy your cheese and your store is one of my faves. I'm saying that as, a, as an individual, as a city council person over people's uh, say so, city taxpayers, McAllister, I have some concerns too. Um, one of the things I'd like to know is what was the issue with the Krebs City Council, why they didn't go with this? I, we didn't talk to the council. Uh, we talked to their city administrator who spoke to their mayor. Yes. Um, he didn't give me a reason why they did for, they've been involved in this project for, I, don't, I guess really since we began and uh -huh. when asked if they would be wanting to do it, they said, we're not, we're not really ready to do that, do that at this time. Okay. And the other thing it mentioned on the, uh, presentation you have partners bek well, how come they can't finance this well, that's not really that, their area that's a good question They're, i think uh, so yeah okay. it, it is a good question and that would be nice to see that happen uh but the, you know they're a for-profit distribution company or a small you know cheese manufacturer uh they did just agree to give us a fifteen hundred dollar pass on the upcoming food shows here in the market we currently work with mm -hmm. so i did reach out to them to secure that they've done other uh built-in marketing for us so they they have in a lot of ways um sort of guided us along on this uh, path and kind of got us where we are mm -hmm. to ask them to secure a loan i haven't actually thought of doing that i don't think they would they would, they would say no because you know that's just not really the nature of a company mm -hmm. to do um but we have leaned on them for support with getting into food shows and we probably they probably comped us on probably five six thousand dollars of food shows over the last five years since we've been working with them okay. is it okay to please continue. Uh, what i think i would feel more comfortable with because it almost seems like we're kind of getting in a banking situation here and all due respect to you know laveras because like i said it's one of my favorite stores i would like to see an ordinance or some regulations in place before we do something like this. Sure. That's my comment. Please, Councilman Smith. As you can tell by looking at me, I like your cheese also. <laughs> I, uh, but I don't like the fact that this is in Krebs. Why don't you build it out at our Taylor Park, you know, no. industrial park? Then it would make Four more five. sense. <laughs> what were your gross sales last year? Uh, our gross sales of cheese last year were $442,000, and we plan to hit six hundred dollars or better this year. Okay, so out of $442,000, you can't secure a loan for $30,000, or you didn't put aside money for that? That's a great question. Um, we have, and we've spent a good deal of that money, um, and we've made a lot of investments over the first six months of this year. And we've seen this growth happen um, 
the, we don't have the inventory to handle the growth that we're seeing. So it's kind of a situational uh, situation oh, where all goodness. of a sudden we're left without enough product right. and we're now without enough money to fund. You know, we buy the milk, we pay the dairy the same day. We're not like know. large companies that give them, uh, you know, a check 30 days later minus X, Y, Z. So we pay up front for the raw material, which is only good for 72 hours. And, you know, everything wants to destroy it. And then we process the cheese. We age some of these cheeses out. Some of our cheeses are aged for 18 months. And so, you know, there's a really a lag time um, in that. And when you look at going into such a large market in such a large way, uh, we really need to build in very quickly to handle that type of situation. A lot of companies have their biggest yeah. problems when they have a lot of success. Mm -hmm and they're having to supply inventory to meet all these demands. But anyway, you know, my primary concern is citizens of McAllister, I don't think really put us here to back other communities' situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we say they're gonna come here and spend it, should we help improve the roads so they can get here more easily? <laughs> you know, it's just, I think it's a stretch for us we got a lot of our own problems and we have a, you know, our budget is pretty tight mm -hmm. in taking care of our own needs here. Right. And although this is just back and putting 24 K away for five years, mm -hmm. it's still, you know, the downside <coughs> is you could lose the 24 K. So I'm just, I'm against it mainly on the principle that it's an outside city, uh, industry you know it's like what was it six or seven years ago we had tucker oil well servicing company that came in they're out on the highway you know doing well and they wanted the city to fund some of their startup and the city apparently decided not to do that at the time because they're not in the city limits not in the city limits i think McAllister foundation helps supply some of that money and I wish you well, but I just, I don't feel good about taking the Calister money and spending it in other communities. I wish you well. Any other questions? Or Mr. One, one thing to that, uh, not that I'm disagreeing with the, the principle of that, but um, we do support entities that are outside of the city limits. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mac app being the largest of that. Um, 10 years ago, the industrial park wasn't technically in the city limits. So the, the benefits of those do, do flow into the community. Um, obviously the size of Mac app, it was going to have much larger impacts. Um, but I, I do hope that we can, that we can consider projects that aren't necessarily in our jurisdiction that do have a positive impact in the future. Is there mayor? Please. Is there a rush on this? Is, do, this can't is we special. not give some guidelines or something that in writing that can kind of? As far as my opinion, yeah, I mean, you got my opinion on this is that I, I, as a citizen and as a someone that helps contribute to the economy here, uh, I think your idea is superb, and that there should be some regulation, some guidance, mm -hmm. and I would, I would venture to say that, in my humble opinion. If the city were able to act as a guarantor for future loans for companies such as ours or others, whether inside the city limits or not, if you're a manufacturing company and you're selling products outside of this county, then you're helping improve the lives of McAllister citizens. That thirty thousand dollars that we're asking for, twenty four from the city, is going to allow us to springboard our brand into one of the largest, most ripe cheese markets in the country of which we are one of the leading Midwest cheese companies in the Midwest. We've been recognized. We're, we've, I just got back from Richmond, Virginia at the American Cheese Society. We're known nationally. We're springboarding our brand and our sales into the Dallas-Fort Worth market. As I aforementioned, last year we sold $442,000 in cheese. This year we plan to sell 600000 or better, probably six twenty five. dollars That launch into Dallas will, over the next two years, I can assure you this, bring an additional Five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars into this town, of which we will have to hire more employees. <clears throat> so, is it in the best interest of the city of McAllister to act in the capacity of a guarantor of loans? I would highly suggest so, and that it would be foolish not to, in my humble opinion. Furthermore, 
if you're willing to go out on a limb and build stop signs, uh, road improvement, facility upgrades, infrastructure upgrades, thing, bring uh, chain-based companies into our town, which nearly take money out of our town. They, they add jobs, but you can add jobs unless you're adding wealth. There's really, in my, I, my fledgling understanding of economics is we need to bring money into your town. That's what we're going to do. Well, you're doing a good job. I don't eat cheese, but you, well, you got me wanting to buy some. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yes, I think it would be a great idea as far as the, uh, the need to get the job done quickly. Um, you know, like I said, we're, we're going to be at this food show on October 2nd. We're going to we're going to win with or without this. We're going to make it happen. We're, we have to. The failure is not an option. I have dairies that I support their entire production. Their families survive off of our business. So we're not going to lose. But would it be in the best interest of the city and the council to do this? I would think so. And I would love to come back uh, with that infrastructure and, and have something that levels the playing field of whoever is sitting up in front of you guys. Kurt, how long would it take you? So the, the <laughs> well, the lead committee get some good guidelines. So we're we're pushing this yeah. through the lead committee. They meet once a month. They met today. Um, I don't know if they would if we'll have everything ready. I mean, they may have other changes the next time we meet. Uh, but even if they are ready, the next meeting, since it occurs on council day, it'll be the council lead meeting following that that we could potentially get it on. So um, three three council meetings away potentially. Okay. Well. I'll make a motion that we uh, postpone this until we can uh, come up with something in writing and um, some, you know, guidelines. some guidelines. guidelines. We're not trying to stall you. We just we need something there to show the public. You know, right. we we are elected, and they can unseat us or anyone when they get ready. So, so that's my motion. Okay, so a motion to postpone this. Yes, until, until we come with some guidelines. Okay. Do you want to? So postpone it into the next council meeting? Well, or do you want to just suspend this? In the, suspend it. Okay. Postpone it definitely. Then. So, okay. Um, is that correct, Mr. Brown? Well, I'm, I want to help these guys, but I also want to make sure we get something. Yeah. That, okay. We'd have to do it. Okay. Uh, yes. Is that, can I ask one Please. Uh, is, um, is there any reason that the bank selected the city council over the Pittsburgh County Commission or something like that? Because you are county. So we in that your creds. Uh, why did they pick this McAllister City Council? So McAllister is the only community in Pittsburgh County that has an active economic development program. Oh, is that um, why it was Pittsburgh selected? County does have economic development funds, but they they haven't really undertaken these types of projects before. Well, is there any way that uh, any way they could be approached for this also, would, or does it have to be strictly us? We could do anything that any combination of things that need to be done. Mm -hmm. All right, that was a suggestion. All right. Thank you. My two cents for what it's worth. I think everybody up here has given their opinion. I don't think anybody here in this community or on this council is against Lavera's. Correct. Quite frankly, I shop over there. I enjoy it very much. We're, I'd say that there's not anybody up here. <laughs> Councilman Brown's going to start buying your cheese now. Apparently, you <laughs> sold him on it. Um, probably my comments are probably more to you, Mr. Ryden. Sure. I love the idea of seeing small projects like this because I think those are worthwhile projects, especially to help develop, developing and growing brands. I think some of my concerns are, and this this might be to please take this with all due respect, Mr. Duffy, Mr. Lavera. I mean, you guys have built a good brand there, and you work hard at it. I know you do. I've been over there and seen you. I've talked to you before, Sammy. I mean, I, I know how hard you guys work at it. My concern is not personal. It's more as a councilman, yeah. is that we're guaranteeing a loan, giving almost 80% to a local bank. Mr. Reidner, my comment to you would be, I don't know why we couldn't just make a loan directly to companies such as them through our economic development. So as you proceed forward with the lead, my mm -hmm. opinion, just giving it since we're here, is that I would like to see it developed out that how can we do these small loan-based programs where they can come, they know the process, they know that the lead committee vets it, the council approves mm -hmm. it or disproves it but we have a, a set and process way to do it. I don't think that there's anything wrong with adding a little bit more structure to it. I'm okay with it being we figure out each project at the zone because everybody's gonna need a little bit of different guidance. Some of my concerns are is that though we are guaranteeing a loan for a local bank that, you know, we, no offense, but if something should happen to them, I don't think there is anything going to, but if something did, 
the taxpayers of McAllister lose out on $24,000 with no collateral or anything else. The bank has all the collateral mm -hmm. and that's fine. That's what the banks are in the process of doing. Cities aren't necessarily in the process of doing that, but I'd like to see some more structure in place that maybe we can protect the taxpayers while also empowering businesses to grow and hire more people and expand their businesses. So love the idea. Mm -hmm. Think some more structure. It sounds like we do have a motion though no motion. to uh, postpone it indefinitely until we can get that. Was there a second for that? Second. Councilwoman Harrison. Roll. Is there any more discussion? Any more comments or anything? Thank okay. you. Would you call the roll, please, Cora? Councilman 